Hey folks, welcome back to Where's Walter? I'm Walter. And I'm Rebecca. And today we're planning your first cruise by looking at options to book that cruise. So in another episode, we touched upon this, but you know, booking the cruise can be one of the most confusing aspects for a new cruiser. Uh, it's not like booking a hotel. You know, you just see the hotel room, a whole bunch of websites, there's all the various prices, you pick it and go. Uh, with the cruise, with every level of cabin, there's, there's different variations of the cabins. There's all kinds of extra fees. There's this, there's that, port fees, a lot of things that uh, first time cruisers don't understand. Uh, so we're gonna talk about a few options that could help you in booking your first cruise. So first of all, we're gonna start out talking about travel agents, uh, booking direct, and hurricane season. And this especially applies for those of you watching from the United States. Uh, if you're watching this from the US, more than likely your first cruise will be a Caribbean cruise. Uh, they're the cheapest, they're the most plentiful, uh, and they have a lot of variety. And so there's something called hurricane season. And it generally in the US, it actually runs from say June to November, but for the purposes of cruising, generally they consider August through say early October, late October to be hurricane season for cruises. And there's two things to, to know about this. Uh, uh, one, the prices can be a little bit cheaper. Uh, if cruise lines are going to run sales, they will generally run them or if they're gonna reduce rates, they will generally have cheaper rates during hurricane season because there are a lot of people who are afraid to cruise uh, during hurricanes. They get concerned that, hey, a ship might get caught in a hurricane which leads me to point number two. Ships can move, islands can't. So uh, we happened to sail during Hurricane Irma and- Maria. Maria, yeah. So we were actually right in between the two. Um, we left Miami three days before Hurricane Irma hit St. Thomas, which was supposed to be our first stop. Uh, and our ship just simply went straight south to Curacao, changed the itinerary and just basically sort of kind of followed uh, Irma back in. And we ended up having the best weather we've ever had on a cruise. So don't let hurricane season scare you uh, about booking a cruise during that time because the ships will change their itinerary uh, during that season. And that is one thing to understand about booking any cruise. Any itinerary can change at any time without notice, even after you get on the ship. Things may happen beyond the ship's control or whatnot, so all of your planned stops may or may not happen. So you kinda gotta roll with it. Now the most direct way to book a cruise is, well, direct. Uh, most cruise lines have websites now and you can go ahead and peruse through the various ships, the itineraries and go ahead and book your cruise. Um, but again, for a first time cruiser, there are a lot of things that you have to take into consideration, uh, such as you know the specialty meals, the dining packages, the drink packages, this package, that package, uh, what kind of discounts are in play, might not be in play, are they a good deal? Um, so there is a lot to navigate, especially for a first time cruiser. So we actually recommend a uh, travel agent. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh wow, travel agent, I'm gonna have to pay them. Uh, actually they don't, right? No, the uh, cruise line pays their commission. See, so you can use all the services of a travel agent. You don't have to pay them anything. The cruise line actually pays for them. Uh, and, and one of the things about you know good travel agents, and, and we recommend that you do some research on that, uh, they know the cruise line well. They know the ships, they know the itineraries. Um, so first of all, they can walk you through making sure that the ship that you choose and the itinerary that you're choosing actually meshes with your vacation style. Um, you know, because we wanna make sure that your first cruise is a good one. And if you get the wrong ship and the wrong itinerary for what you guys are expecting, you might be a little disappointed. So a, a travel agent can help with that. Um, now, the, the second part of this, Let's say for whatever reason, you need to make changes to your cruise. Uh, you can't go, or you wanna go ahead and change ships, or you wanna change an itinerary. If you booked it yourself, now you have to go through that whole process of contacting the cruise line, working through all the changes, trying to get the changes made. If you work through a travel agent, all you have to do is just call them and say, we wanna make a change. They then have to pick up the ball and call the, travel, and call the cruise line and do everything for you uh, which makes your job a lot easier. And sometimes it's as simple as, hey, can you make the changes, please? Thank you, hang up. They go ahead and make all the changes for you and then get back to you. So going through a travel agent certainly makes that a lot easier. And if you go through a travel agent, you're actually required to go through that travel agent to make your changes. Yeah, so it just makes it that much easier for you. Um, so we already said they don't cost you anything, right? Uh, they're paid by the cruise lines. 
Um, now, they can also offer some extras sometimes. Um, because they do a lot of business with these cruise lines, sometimes they can get perks. Uh, something as simple as maybe there's a bottle of wine waiting for you in your cabin, or sometimes champagne, um, some chocolate. Uh, they could get you some potentially some free meals on board or some onboard credit, uh, things like that, which is kind of cool, mm -hmm. right? Um, now, we have booked ourselves through Costco travel for most of our cruises. Um, and on our very first cruise, Rebecca had actually done a bunch of research yes. prior, um, but it was our very first cruise. So we decided to call Costco Travel. Well, that was the only option at the time. Yeah. And she spent well, at least a good two hours on the phone with us, walking us through. I mean, we, we talked about balconies. We talked about ships. We talked about the itineraries. We talked about this. We talked about that. And she asked us, have you considered this? Have you considered that? It was a really nice walkthrough for a first cruise. And since then, we still use Costco Travel. Now, we do book online these days because yes. now we understand all the procedures. Um, but at any given time, we can call. And in fact, our next cruise, we went through uh, Delta uh, Sky Miles Travel. Sky Miles Cruises, yes. Sky Miles Cruises uh, to book Virgin Voyages because Costco doesn't happen to uh, carry Virgin yet. And they were very pleasant. And now with all the changes going on, we were able just to simply call Delta and say, okay, our cruise was canceled. We would like to change it to this one. And then they went at it. And a couple days later, everything got settled up. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when originally the cruise was a Cuba itinerary, and when that all changed, they contacted us. They helped us make changes to that option. Mm -hmm. So that was very helpful. Yeah, so the travel agent, if there is a change to your itinerary, they're going to contact you and say, hey, we were just notified by the cruise line, your cruise has been changed. What would you like to do? Now with Costco travel, uh, sometimes we get extra onboard credit. Sometimes we'll get a cash card that's given to us to use at Costco after the cruise is over. Sometimes they actually give a little bit of both. Uh, with Delta, we get extra Sky Miles on our, uh, on our uh, Sky Miles plan. So that's why Rebecca decided to use them for our, our Virgin Voyages cruise. So that's the other thing to look at, you know, with travel agents, you know, what kind of perks could you get that go beyond just the cruise itself? Cruise lines are running specials all the time, and they look amazing when you see them. Oh, wow, 50% off second person. Oh, third or fourth person goes free. But it's very important to look at them carefully, and you do need to read all the fine print, and sometimes you have to look at the history of the cruise or maybe look at the rates on both sides of the sale because like that 50% off, the cruise line might have raised the rates by 50% off just to drop it by 50%, so it's still the same price, right? So what, what are some of the other things to look for? Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, when there's a cruise we're interested in, I'll start a spreadsheet and just track the price. Mm -hmm. So I know, aside from their jargon and what deals they're offering, I know if the price has changed. Um, and sometimes the think sales you see are only available to new bookings. Mm -hmm. So you can't take advantage of it if you are already booked and you want to, unless you cancel and then rebook. Yeah, that's but, very important, yeah, to understand that because a lot of times the sales apply only to a new booking and you could cancel and rebook, but keep in mind you might lose your deposit that you yes. already had on the first booking, right? Because you do have to be careful whether the deposit is refundable or non-refundable and that is definitely one thing to confirm before you complete your booking so you know one way or the other. Um, sometimes it'll allow you to make a change, but quite often there's like, hundred or two hundred dollar per person change fee so depending on your deposit you've lost it all anyway yeah so the fine print actually really really matters when you book a cruise and, and rebecca just kind of led us right into our next topic which is the down payment and the payment structure now payment structure for a cruise is different than a hotel you know with a hotel you simply give your credit card number you book the hotel and they don't actually charge you till you come there and in fact you have until 48 hours usually before the before you show up at the hotel to cancel cruise lines is quite a bit different um, so what you're going to do first when you book the cruise you will be putting down a down payment or a deposit whatever it is they call it and then somewhere between 90 and 120 days before the cruise you will be putting down your final payment and at that point you're committed to taking the cruise or you could potentially lose your, your deposit. So let's talk about that. So the deposit, when you book, is most likely going to be non-refundable. So that means if you cancel for whatever reason, you're gonna lose whatever that down payment is. Now that down payment is what, like 10 to 20% usually, Rebecca? Usually, unless they're running a special with a, a lower down payment, like $100 down payment. Yeah, so for the most part, 
the, the down payment will be between 10 and 20% of whatever your cruise is. So, you know, if it's a $3,000 cruise, it's $300 to $600 uh, is what you'll be paying for the uh, deposit or down payment. That is when you actually book the cruise. Um, and then 90 to 120 days prior to the cruise, whatever that cruise line sets up, you will then make the final payment, which is the rest of your fare to come on board. Um, now, once you've made that final payment, you are committed to going on that cruise. Um, Rebecca, what would generally happen if they had to try to cancel their cruise after they've made that final payment? Well, every cruise line has um, a specific structure of how many days you might get, start out with, you might get 75% back if it's a certain amount of days, 50% at a smaller amount, and it keeps going down till you get nothing back usually about 30 days prior and what she's talking about is prior to the cruise so the the sooner that you cancel before the cruise the more money that the cruise line would give you back minus that down payment so they might give you 75 percent of the fare back uh, if you canceled say like 100 days out uh, and they might not give you anything back if you had to cancel say 10 days out and your travel agent should be able to walk you through all of those details or you can look on the individual cruise lines mm -hmm. websites and they will have that information. And there. again, it's a lot of fine print sometimes. So again, another good reason to have a travel agent because they will walk you through exactly. And one of the questions that you should ask your travel agent, what happens if we cancel after the final payment? And they should be able to walk you through, well, here's what will happen. Um, because you will lose money. There, there's no way around that. Now there is a way to get a refundable deposit, um, but you have to pay more for the fare, right? Generally, yes. Yeah, so if your cabin is $1,500 per person, uh, that's a non-refundable deposit. If you want, you could call the cruise line or tell your travel agent, we would like a refundable deposit. Well, that fare is gonna go up uh, because the cruise line, and it's probably, my guess would be, go up about what the down payment would be somewhere in there. But they will raise the fare if you ask for a refundable deposit. Traveler's insurance has always been a big topic among cruisers. I mean, should I get it? Do I need it? Um, well, first of all, with all the changes going on, cruise lines may now require it. So it may no longer be an option. So traveler's insurance essentially does two things. Uh, one, it protects you in case you have to cancel your cruise after the final payment. Uh, and two, it can uh, uh, help you get medical coverage if you're outside your home country, which is especially important to you US viewers. Um, was there something else, Rebecca? Yeah, the, the trip coverage portion can also cover such things as uh, airline delays and you have additional expenses there. If your luggage is lost and you need to buy clothing, um, there's cost limits on all of that, but right. it will cover that as well. Yeah, and I think one thing you mentioned earlier, if there's a change in your itinerary, so it's supposed to be a round trip, but then your cruise ends up somewhere else, coming back to a different port, now there's additional expenses to get home. So Traveler's Insurance actually does a lot of really, really good things. Now Traveler's Insurance will cover many reasons for you to cancel, you know, obviously injury, a medical issue, maybe there's a death in the family, something going on. So Traveler's Insurance will cover a lot of reasons that you have to cancel and you will get up to 100% of your money back even if you cancel a day before the cruise. Now there's another version of it that says for any reason. So you literally don't have to have uh, any pressing issue is just, I don't want to go on the cruise now, or something has changed that doesn't fall into the guidelines of traveler's insurance. Such so, as say you lose your job, that's hmm. not a covered reason, or you have to change jobs and your vacation policy changes. That's not a covered reason. A, lot, a thing that's important to a lot of us is mm -hmm. something goes wrong with one of your um, pets. Hmm. That's not a covered reason. Yeah. So, you know, for any reason, it's going to cost you a little bit more, obviously, to get that version of it, but it literally, for any reason that you want to cancel the cruise, you will get the money back and you can cancel it one day before the cruise and you will get your money back. So traveler's insurance is very, very important. Um, here's a good reason to do it. And I don't know why people still do this, but they will do their flight to the port on the same day as the cruise. The ship will not wait for you. If your flight is delayed, if your flight is canceled and you cannot get to the port that day, you're going to miss the cruise. And as that ship sails away, so does all of your money. Traveler's insurance will protect for that. So, you know, we highly recommend travel. I, I don't know that we've ever done one without it. No. Um, just a bit about 
if something were to happen to us in another country, because every cruise we go on, we're in another country, if something were to happen to us and we had to get off the ship and get medical attention from the local you know, health officials, our uh, health insurance won't cover that. So traveler's insurance will. And um, just if you have to be medically evacuated back to the U.S., that can be really expensive. Mm -hmm. And that is something that there will be at least a certain amount of coverage for yeah. with traveler's insurance. And again, a travel agent can help you with this. A good travel agent can help you with this and navigate the various you know, uh, uh, traveler's insurance and where to get it. Now, the cruise lines do offer insurance, and then there's third party that offer insurance. Now, what do we typically do, Rebecca? Generally, we get third party. Um, because we usually book through Costco, they offer really good third party insurance um, with very, very high coverages for really barely more than what the cruise lines would charge. Um, and that's one of the things when you're looking, you have to make sure you're comparing apples to apples is how much coverage do you get for medical evacuation? Mm -hmm. How much coverage do you get for trip cancellation? I mean, you have to look at those coverage amounts. So there's a lot of research in going into a cruise and, and you know, I, I sound like a broken record, but again, a good travel agent can help you with a lot of this. So obviously a little bit more involved than just going in and just saying it's not like a hotel, you don't just pick a room and then you're done with it. There's a lot of other things that you have to consider. And, and definitely consider a travel agent. We'll put the links to the two that we use uh, down below this and, and on our website. So hope that was helpful for you. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell icon so every time we have a new cruise video or recipe or an interview or a drink, you'll know that it's up there. So thanks for watching. I'm Walter. And I'm Rebecca. We'll see you next time.